Ma'am, good afternoon to you. Hi, Watch your step as you come forward. Um, if you need a glass of water or something, let us know. Okay. Mr. Gray over here will certainly do his best to accommodate you. Okay. Um, you. There's an objection made by one of the parties during your testimony. Just pause. Let me roll in the objection first, and we'll go from there, okay? Okay. And you can manipulate the microphone um, to help you project your voice. Okay. Um, Ms. French, you may inquire. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Please introduce yourself to the jury. My name is Samaya Sawyer. And what is your date of birth? September 25th, 2003. And how old are you today? I'm 19. And where do you generally live? I'm um, Jacksonville. And how long have you lived here in Jacksonville? For 19 years. So is that your whole life? Yeah. <laughs> and what are you doing for a living? Um, I'm a student. And what are you studying? Uh, biomedical science. And what do you want to do later? I would like to be a physician. All right. And where did you graduate high school? Terry Parker. In what year? 2022. And who is your mother? Kimberly Mobley. And do you have siblings? Yes. You have a sister and two, and two brothers? Yes. And is I.S. your older sister? Yes. Only though by, by year, is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. Now, drawing your, actually we ask you, and is your father Willie Saw Sawyer? Yes, ma'am. And does your mother have a big extended family? Yes. And um, are you close to all of your aunts? Yes, ma'am. And do you also have some family members in Georgia? Yes, ma'am. And is that their legal names, I know you don't call them by their legal names, but are, are they Nancy and Clifford Ware? Yes, ma'am. Now, did did your grandma Nancy Ware, did she provide you and IS cell phones? Yes. And did your grandma Nancy Ware also provide you an IS in a bank account? Yes, ma'am. And would she put you know, some small money in there for you to have for spending. Yes, ma'am. And in fact, does your grandma, um, Nancy Ware, do that to this day? Yes. And were there occasions where you would visit with your grandparents in Georgia? Yes. And would that be during the summer when you were not in school? Yes, ma'am. Now, where, when... Back when IS and you, um, I would say around the 2017-2018 time frame, did the two of you tend to be at the same place? Yes, ma'am. How would you have considered your relationship with IS during that those two years? Um, very close. In fact, even younger, were the two of you always close? Yes, ma'am. However, were you also typical close siblings? Yes. Meaning you would do normal bickering of sister stuff? Yes, ma'am. Would you and I, S, also tell each other a lot of information that, I guess you could maybe call it a secret? Yes, ma'am. Things that necessary you wouldn't want to tell your mom? Yes. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. Now, in regards to different places that you and or IS would go, where are those locations? Again, I'm just trying to keep your focus to the 2017-2018 time frame. Yes, ma'am. Um, my mom's house, occasionally my father, um, with my grandma's during the summer, and my Aunt Naomi's house. And your father, Mr. Sawyer, Willie Sawyer, does he live here in Duval County as well? Yes, ma'am. And back in that time frame of 2017 and 2018, were you living off of India Avenue? Yes, ma'am. And now you had mentioned um, Naomi. Is that one of your aunts? Yes. And is her last name Mobley, just for record purposes? Yes, ma'am. And back in 2017 um, through 2018, was did she have a husband? Yes, ma'am. And who was that? Uh, Jonathan Quillis. And is that how you got to know that individual? Yes, ma'am. And did you, though, call that individual outside of courtroom purposes Uncle John? Yes. And if you were to see that person again, would you be able to identify that person by something that he's wearing and where located in the courtroom? Yes, ma'am. Just take a moment. 
And did you see the person that you know to be a Jonathan Quillis? Yes, ma'am. Where is he located? Um, he's sitting on to my right side of the room next to Michelle with glasses on and a ponytail. And um, could you tell the color of the shirt, please? It's white. You're going to let the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant? So reflected. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. So was there a reason why you particularly were to go over to this aunt's home, the Naomi and the defendant's home? Yes. And why was that? Um, mainly my sister would want to go, and I will just go with her. And did your aunt Naomi and, and then at the time the defendant, um, being your uncle, did they have children? Yes. How many at that time? One. And was that a little girl? Yes. And were, are her initials in Q? Yes, ma'am. And when I say little, because how old is she today? She is eight. So between five and six years ago, she would have been between the ages of approximately two and three? Yes. Now, did your aunt Naomi Mobley, did she work? Yes. And would she be gone um, from the home for, with a full-time job? Yes, ma'am. And then who would be at the home? Um, the, the, the defendant. That's okay. You can refer to him however you're comfortable, okay? Okay. Don't, don't feel like you're forced to say one thing or the other, all right? Okay. And when you and your sister would go over to the defendant's home, who would be there? Um, him and his daughter. And then would your aunt arrive after she was done with working? Yes, ma'am. And during that time frame, does your aunt also do um, work with a trucking company? Yes, ma'am. And would that, um, when she had that particular job, would that keep her away also during the night hours? Yes, ma'am. And just, and so back in 2017, going through 2018, how old approximately would you have been? 15. And then in 2017? 14. And would you have been in middle school and then high school during those two, two years? Yes, ma'am. Now, did your mom work full time? Yes, ma'am. And is that also why you would go to your aunt Naomi and uncle and in your defendant's home? Is that also for the defendant to watch you? Yes, ma'am. And as you got older, though, were you also assisting with watching NQ? Yes, ma'am. Now, how would you describe your, per, first of all, to say, generally speaking, your relationship um, with the defendant at first? Oh, it, was, it was okay. It was close. And based upon your own observations, how at first, I mean, again, this is just beginning, you know, when you're first meeting the defendant, um, your observations of IS and defendant, did, did they seem to have a, a good relationship? Yes, ma'am. Now, at some point, did you learn that the relationship between IS and the defendant was not an appropriate one? Yes, ma'am. And would IS confide things into you? Yes, ma'am. In fact, did you observe things inappropriate between IS and the defendant? Yes, ma'am. And were those observations made at the defendant's home? Yes, ma'am. Now let's talk about first, were there two different homes that the defendant and your aunt had during the 2017 to 2018 time frame? Yes. Let's talk about the first one. Um, was that located at 1503? Um, 16th Street? Yes. Let me show you a couple photographs here. And is 1503 East 16th Street here in Duval County? Yes, ma'am. And we're looking at States 19A. Do you recognize it? Yes. And the home that we're looking at to the right, is that the home we're talking about? Yes, ma'am. Now, majority of the time that you would go see the defendant, is this where they were living? Yes, ma'am. In fact, in the, 
during at some point in 2018, is that when they moved to the next location off of Trout River Road? Correct. Next in states, evidence 19B, again, is this the 1503 residence? Yes, ma'am. And is this another viewpoint then of the residence in states 19D? Yes, ma'am. Now, was this home commonly referred to as the Yellow House? Yes. Now, in states, states evidence 19F, is this one of the entry points to the home? Yes, ma'am. And then in states 19H, is this another entry point inside of the home? Yes, ma'am. Now, just to go back, at the time that your the defendant and your aunt lived here, if we were to go into that first door, what would we see? Um, gym equipment, like there was bongos in there, and there was gym equipment and bongos in there, and um, other like miscellaneous items. So gym equipment, bongos, and some miscellaneous items, is that what you were just saying, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. And were you, was there also an opening to go into another portion of the home? Yes, ma'am, I went into the living room. And at the time that the defendant and your aunt lived there, can you tell us the layout of that living room? Yes, um, the couch would be um, facing the opening of the dining room, and um, depending on what time it was on another couch on the wall going to the hallway or by the door um, to that room. Was there also then um, a dining room, a kitchen, and at the time one bedroom and one bath? Yes, ma'am. And is that that entry point that you said at the time, though, when your family lived there, it was a gym? Yes. i fast forward here a second. So here in States 19L, would this have been the area of the living room? Yes. However, when your family lived there, though, there was two couches? Yes. Now, I'm looking, looking at uh, this picture. Where would the couches have been located? And you uh, can actually draw if you take your, if you take your free one, when you, because I know there was, Two different arrangements, is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell us about the first arrangement? Um, the first one was there was a couch here and then one right here. And then at some point were the couches also rearranged? Yes, ma'am. And here. And, uh, and when you make sure I get this clear on the record. So there was a couch that was in the middle of the room and then there was a couch against the wall to the right. Is that what you just drew, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Now, in the second layout of couches, where would they have been? Um, there was a wall on that side. It was one there and still one here. Okay. So, is it fair to say that the couch in the middle stayed as is, and then there was a couch moved to the, to the left side of the room? Yes, ma'am. And I know it's a little bit blurry, but if we were to keep going to... Let me go back a second. If we were to keep going to the left behind this couch, would we have arrived at these three doors? Yes, ma'am. And the door right here, I've drawn a, uh, which would be the one that's actually facing us, would that have been the bathroom? Yes, ma'am. And then again, at the time that your, that your aunt and the defendant lived there, would there have been one bedroom in this location between those doors? Yes, ma'am. Now, when you would go over there, where would you sleep? Um, in the living room. Where would I sleep? Sometimes in the living room. And you said, and you said sometimes, so where else? Um, in the bedroom. Now, when she would sleep in the bedroom, who was home? Uh, the defendant. So IS would sleep in the bedroom with the defendant? Correct. Now, let me go ahead and just ask you this, SS, and let's get it out of the way. Yes. Was a code name used for the defendant? Yes, ma'am. What was that code name? Jose. So the person that you just described with the white shirt, the hair and the ponytail, wearing the glasses, sitting at council table, is in fact Jose. Is that right? Right. And was that to protect what was happening? Yes, ma'am. Not because you wanted to, but I asked wanted it. Correct. We'll get a little bit more into that. Is this the kitchen area then of 19N of the home? Yes, ma'am. Now we draw your attention to 19O. Was there a laundry room? Yes, ma'am. 
Now, can you kind of indicate, and you can use your finger, please, of where that laundry room would be located? Um, it's right around there. So, you would, would you have to go outside of the home? Yes, ma'am. And you circled an area on a second yellow building. Was that yellow building turned into apartments? Yes. However, at the end of that apartment unit, down closer to the other side of the home, not the roadway side, there was a laundry room. Correct. And again, is this then showing the access to that laundry room in States 19P? Yes, ma'am. 19Q, 19R, and then one more in 19S. Bless you. Would that be the area then of the laundry room? Yes, ma'am. Now, we had just talked about the fact that you would see your sister when your aunt was not home sleep in the bed with the defendant. Now, did you also observe other inappropriate things that the defendant did with your sister from your own eyes? Yes, ma'am. Now, we'll talk, we'll talk about the couch situation last, but tell me about first what you observed through this time frame. Yes, ma'am. Um, he would grope her in various areas or like kiss her neck or her lips in like an inappropriate way. So you would see the defendant kiss her lips, being her mouth? Yes. And kiss her neck? Yes. And then you say grope her? Yes. Everyone has a different definition, so what does that mean to you? Um, to touch um, inappropriately or in a sexual manner. And when you say touch, would that be on IS? Correct. And would that be the defendant touching IS? Yes, ma'am. And where would he touch IS? We know obviously the mouth. Yeah. You've, you've told me about the mouth. You've told me about the neck. Um, her butt, her waist, her chest. Now, was there a time frame that you saw anything else inappropriate between your sister and the defendant? Yes. And where did that occur? Um, in the living room. At the, it, what we were just looking at here? In States 19L? Yes, ma'am. Again, not this furniture, but the furniture of your family? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So that would have been at the Yellow House off of 16th Street? Yes. Can you please tell us what happened? Yes, um, I was on one end of the couch sleep and um, IS and the defendant were on another um, having a sexual encounter and I could hear and feel the couch move. And so just to be clear, was it dark in the room? Yes. Did you ever open your eyes? No. Could you hear sounds? Yes. Could you hear sounds of more than one person? Yes. Could you identify who those individuals were? Yes, ma'am. And who were they? The defendant and I is. And you had stated there were two couches in there. Yes. Were they on the same couch as you or a different the different couch? Um it was like a different section of the couch, yes, ma'am. And did you hear noises that were inappropriate? Yes. And, I'm, and I don't mean to be inappropriate with asking these type of questions. I just want to make sure that I understand you correctly. Would those include moans? Yes. That a person would make having sexual intercourse? Yes. And I believe you say you felt the couch move? Yes. Now, were you aware prior to what happened on this particular day that something inappropriate was happening between IS and the defendant? Yes, ma'am. Now, in relation to the time that your sister was went missing and was, and was killed, 
on 12 19 18 when did that situation occur that that you overheard and felt um roughly a year before so if we're in december 2018 would that have been approximately december of 2017 yes ma'am Now, what I ask besides school, your home, your father, grandparents in Georgia, and the defendant's home, would she go anywhere else? No, ma'am. Was your sister a creature of habit? Yes, ma'am. Kind of like a homebody? Yes. Now, the defend, did the defendant, I'll talk about, ask you just briefly first. The defendant like to communicate with you with a certain um, app. Yes, ma'am. And what app was that? Snapchat. And did the defendant like to talk to your sister with a certain app? Yes, ma'am. And what was that? Snapchat. Did the defendant ever tell you why he liked to talk to you and IS by Snapchat? Um, the message is erased. In fact, did the defendant tell you to not save your messages? Yes, ma'am. What was your Snapchat at the time? Um, I don't remember the handle exactly. Um, something with my name in it. Okay. So something with your name in it? Yeah. Okay. And in regards to IS, did she have more than one Snapchat account? Yes, ma'am. And, and, and I believe those were Princess 446 and XS Yana? Yes, ma'am. So I'm going to backtrack just a second. In regards to a person by the name of Kamar Humphrey. Yes, ma'am. Are you aware who that individual is? Yes, ma'am. And was that a neighbor? Yes. And was that a neighbor that had sex with your sister? Yes, ma'am. And did your mom find out about it? Yes. And that was in earlier of 2018? Yes, ma'am. Now, were you aware that that had happened? Yes. Did your sister tell you? Yes. After your mom found out about Kamar Humphrey, did your sister see, him, see Mr. Humphrey again? No. In fact, did Mr. Humphrey stay in the neighborhood? No. Can you tell us about that? Um, after the police report was filed, um, he moved away shortly after that. Did your sister ever mention Ms. Kamar Humphrey again? No. Did your sister have feelings for Kamar Humphrey? No. However, did your sister have feelings for the defendant? Yes. Did your sister think that she was in love with the defendant? Yes. Now, in the summer of 2018, did you and your sister go, go and visit your grandparents in Georgia? Yes. Would that have been after you finished the, the 2017 to 2018 school year? Yes, ma'am. At some point, did you come back, though, to Jacksonville, Florida? Yes, ma'am. And when you came back, did you go to a certain birthday party? Yes. And whose birthday party? Um, my grandma, Wendy. And is that in early of July, uh, I think July 7th? Correct. And is that an important time for your family to celebrate? Yes. And were you, did you want to be present to that? Yes. And what about IS? Yes. And were you? Yes. And was IS? Yes, ma'am. Now, after spending some time in Georgia, did IS come and stay back at y'all's home on India Avenue? No. And where did she go? Um, my aunt Naomi's home. And did she stay the night there? Yes. And she, did she stay there for more than one night? Yes. Did you go? Yes. And did you stay there for more than one night? Yes, but the second day. Okay. The second day. So what do you mean by the second day? Um, the first night she went, I didn't go. Okay. So 
Initially, just make sure I understand. So initially, IS went and stayed the night at the defendant and, and her aunt, y'all's aunt's home by herself. Yes. However, you joined your sister on the second day and night. Yes. Now, at some point, did you learn that your sister was pregnant? Yes. Do you remember when you learned that she was pregnant in 2018? Yes. And when was that? Um, late July, early August. And at the time, would your sister have been 15? Yes. And would you have been 14? Yes. So this would have been before your birthdays, right? Correct. And did your sister tell you who was the father of the baby? Yes. Who? The defendant. Was this upsetting? Yes. Was abortion ever discussed? Mm, no. However, in thinking about that, did the defendant provide IS some pills that can that can cause abortion? Yes, ma'am. And what were those pills? Um, I'm not sure the correct name, but it, they were green capsules. Let me okay. Let me ask you something here. Let me show you really quickly. I'm showing you state's evidence 18C. Do you recognize it? Yes. And is this the bedroom that you shared with your sister? Yes, ma'am. And was the bed that we see indicated to the left, was that IS's bed? To the uh, left. Left of the picture. Here, let me go. Here, how about that? And state's 18B. Does that help? That's, yeah. Okay. Did you indicate whose bed was whose? Um, this one is IS, and then this one was mine. Okay. So the bed that's closer to the window with the um, the pink drapery, that would be IS's bed? Yes, ma'am. And then your bed would be closest to the, to the entry point of your bedroom towards the right? Yes. Now, was something stored in the bedroom that you shared with IS? Yes. And were these those pills? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And were they stored in the closet in a shoebox? Yes. And I'm showing you states 18 G. Were those the pills? Yes. And they're indicated as parsley and donquay. Do those look familiar to you? Yes, ma'am. And were those provided by the defendant? Yes. And did the defendant want IS to take these pills? Yes, ma'am. And then your understanding of why the defendant wanted you wanted IS to take these pills was to prevent having a pregnancy. Yes, ma'am. Now, in going back and, and talking about the, when you found out that your sister was pregnant, did you tell anybody? No. Why not? wanted to keep the relationship with my sister and she said she eventually tell. So were you protecting your sister? Yes. Did you not want to disclose this horrible secret? Yes. How long had you been keeping this horrible secret of IS having a sexual relationship with the defendant? Um, I believe it was late December of 2018. I'm sorry. Oh, you meant that's when you finally told? Yeah. Do you remember how long, though, leading up to December 2018? Um, since... Uh, maybe. I was going to say about t two years or so? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. You don't remember the date, do you? No. But it was prior to 2018? Yes. Okay. Because you had talked about that incident in December of 2017. Yes, ma'am. Did you ever tell anybody before December of 2018 who Jose was? No. Now, early December 
of 2018 did your family find out about IS being pregnant? Yes, ma'am. However, did your sisters ever tell who the dad was? No. Did she still continue to use various names, including Jose? Yes. When I say various names, um, would IS use other names um, so nobody would find out about the defendant? Yes, ma'am. Had IS made the decision to keep the baby? Yes. Did the defendant want IS to have an abortion? Yes. However, was IS adamant that she was not? Yes. Now, did your family ask you if you knew? Yes. Did you tell the truth at first? No. Were you waiting for IS to tell? Yes. However, was there accusations against the defendant? Yes. Do you need a moment? I'm okay. Do you need some water? I'm okay. And did your, are you sure? I'm, I'm okay. okay. Did your sister go to a doctor appointment and confirm the pregnancy? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And take a moment. Okay. Now, on December 19th, 2018, were you at school that day? Yes. And did you see your sister at school? Yes. Did you speak with your sister outside at the picnic tables? No. You were speaking to her at school? Yes. Have you had a chance to review any video surveillance from Terry Parker? Um, some, yes. What about any of times that you talked with your sister? At the picnic tables. Okay. So did you speak with her at the picnic tables? Yes. Okay. Are you a little bit nervous? Okay, just, just take your time. Were you having a serious discussion with her? Yes. Did your sister tell you that she was going to leave for a few weeks? Yes. Did you want her to leave? No. In fact, we're using the Christmas holiday to get her not to leave. Yes. And when I say leave, do you think she was only going to be gone during the Christmas holiday? Yes. Did school matter to your sister? Yes. Was she a straight A student? Yes. Was she already planning her college career? Yes. Did you expect your sister to come back? Yes. Where did your sister say that she was going to go? Um, with my grandmother. And were you asking her not to go? Yes. Did you know that your sister was going to leave school that day? Yes. Did you know she was going to leave early? Yes. But again, you thought she was going to her, your grandmother's? Yes, ma'am. Now, what time does school get out? Two o'clock. And did you get out that day at 2? Yes. That's your recollection? Yes. And how were you to get home that day? The school bus. And did you? Yes. Was your sister there? No. However, did you let your mom know? Yeah. Were you still hoping maybe she hadn't have done it? Yes. And was your mom at work? Yes. Did you contact her by text or by phone call or how? Phone. And did you let her know? Yes, ma'am. However, did you tell your mom that she was just going away for a couple of weeks to your grandmother's? No. And why not? I wanted to protect my sister. But you, did you still want to make sure she was okay? Yes. Now, did you try to reach your sister? Yes. And how did you try to reach her? I'm calling and texting her. Did she respond? No. Did you make it home? Yes. That time was the family advised that IS had not got on the school bus with you? Yes, ma'am. 
And did people start to look look at her? I mean, look for her. Yes, ma'am. In fact, did you even message her to please just contact, let, let you know she's okay, that everything will be okay? Yes. Did that return call or text ever happen? No. Did you even tell your family at that time who Jose was? No. Did you still think your sister would make it back home? Yes. At some point, did you find out that your sister was not at your grandmother's house in Georgia? Yes. Is that when things started to change for you? Yes. And when police were called out, did a Detective Porter talk to you? Yes. Did you tell her the complete truth? No. Did you tell her the truth about who Jose was? No. And why? Why not? I was protecting my sister. And at this time, are you still only 15 years old yourself? Yes. Was it a lot to take in? Yes, ma'am. Did you um, help try to look for her? Yes. Let me ask you this. Did you ever try to talk with the defendant? No. And why not? I'm scared of him. At some point um, towards the end of December, did you talk to your mom? Yeah. Did you tell your mom finally who Jose was? Yes. That it was a defendant? Yes. And did you ever tell then at that time that you thought, or that the defendant was the father of your sister's child? Yes. Now, I have shown you some items previously regarding Victoria's Secret undergarments. Do you remember that? Yes. And did your sister favor that brand? Yes. Did she have a lot of it? Yes. And did I show you several items that had been found at the landfill? Yes. And were, was there a couple of items that um, you identified that you felt were your sister's? Yes. I'm showing you state's evidence 42. Just take a moment and look at it. Have you previously looked at this item? Yes, ma'am. And did this item look familiar to you? Yes. And how? Um, my sister. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Here, I'll get up so you can stop the microphone. My sister had it. Now, normally, what size was your sister? Um, small or medium. And did you look at the size of this item in state's 42 when we met? Yes. And what size was it? A large. And did I ask you about that? Yes. And would your sister ever wear a large? Yes. Tell us about that. Um, if they didn't have her size and she really wanted it, she would size up. Now, and what about the time that she was also pregnant? Um, she would pull them over her stomach. Now, I'm showing you states 44. Do you recognize states 44? Yes, ma'am. Did your sister have a uh, pink bra like this Now, after the items were collected from your bedroom, were you also asked to give your DNA sample? Yes. And did you do that with Detective Abbott? Yes, ma'am. I'm just going to show you some a couple of other pictures really quickly, not many, from State's Evidence 17.
Now, on State 17 T, do you recognize it? Yes. And is this the Trout River Road residence um, that the defendant and your aunt lived in at the time of December 2018? Yes. Now, we see two vehicles. Do you recognize those vehicles? Yes. Can you tell me about the black vehicle first? Um, yes, it was the defendant's um, personal car. And is that like a, uh, looks like a black Dodge type vehicle? Yes. Now, the other vehicle, we don't have the best look yet, but do you recognize it? Yes. And can you tell us about that? Um, it was their shared family car. It's a van. And is, what color is it? It's red. Now, would the defendant drive both of these vehicles? Yes. And would the defendant, um, on occasion, take or pick up you and your sister from Terry Parker. Yes. Also, during the 2018, which would have gone into the 2019 school year, did the defendant's son from another relationship come and live with him and, and his and your aunt? Yes. And what was that son's name? Jacob. Uh, was it uh, Kile's last name? Yes. And was he the same age um, as you or I S? Uh, yes. And did he also go to Terry Parker High School? Yes, ma'am. And was there occasion that when he would take the two of you or also his son in that red van to Terry Parker High School? Yes. I'm just gonna show you a couple other photographs here. From state's evidence 21C, do you recognize it? Yes. Is this the defendant's red van? Yes. This is a closer view than what we saw obviously sitting um, at the property of the defense home at the time? Yes. And again, is that the same red van in state's 21B? Yes. Now, when you would ride with the defendant, where would you normally sit at? Um, in the third row. The third row? Yes. And what about your sister IS? Um, in the second row. And would there also be a, a car seat um, for NQ? Yes. Would that, what row would that be? Second row. Would that be behind the driver or the passenger side? Um, primarily behind the passenger. Okay. Now was your sister due in February? Uh, excuse me, April of 2019, I apologize. Yes. Now, during this time frame of December 2018, actually other portions of 2018, specifically December of 2018, was someone else pregnant? Yes. Who? My Aunt Naomi. So, your sister and your aunt were pregnant by the defendant at the same time? Yes. And did your aunt have her second child with the defendant? Yes. And was it a son? Yes. And when was he born? Um, I believe it's... Feb you don't know the exact date. What about month? Uh, February of 2019. Which would have been two months before your sister was due? Yes. And did, during that time frame, did your aunt also be on bed rest? Yes. And would she stay in the bed during the, during the totality of the day? Yes. Now, when you were looking for your sister, did you also reach out to her friends? Yes. Did your sister have a close-knit group of friends? Yes. Would that include Alberta Vey, Sabriah Payton, Marie Logan, Haley Shimpert? Yes. And did you reach out to them? Yes. Had any of them heard from your sister? No. Were you, though, provided a potential person by the name of Brandon and, like, with a number and a picture? Yes. And I think you had talked about it with Alberta Vey? Yes.
I'm showing you defense exhibit one that's been marked in evidence. Do you recognize it? Yes. Now, is this including a, a picture and a phone number that had been discussed between you and Alberta Bay? Yes. Do you know this person? No. Have you ever seen this person's picture before? No. Were you ever able to talk to this person by this phone number? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thanks for being here. I just have some questions to follow up with you. I know it's late in the day, so hopefully we can get through this as quickly as possible and everybody can go home after that. But I do think it's important that we talk, and so I want to ask you these questions. So if you could give me your attention, I appreciate it. All right. I want to start with the visits that you would do at your uh, Aunt Naomi's house. When you would go over there, it wouldn't just be you. It wouldn't just be IS. You would also go over there from time to time with all of your siblings, correct? Occasionally, yes. Now, sometimes you would go there just yourself to babysit and things like that, correct? Yes. And IS and you would go there together as well? Yes. And there were occasion, I think you said there was one occasion after you came back from visiting your grandmother uh, in the summer of 2018 where IS went over there by herself? Yes. When you all would go over there, you said that at some point it was Jonathan Quillis who lived there, your Aunt Naomi, their daughter, NQ, and then into the 2018 school year, his son, Jacob, also lived there, correct? Yes. When you would visit, all of those people would be there? Occasionally. Was there ever a time when it was just Jonathan Quillis and no children in the house? Yes. When you went to Mr. Quillez's home and your Aunt Naomi's home, was that primarily the time when you would see what you would classify as inappropriate um, behavior between him and, between him being Jonathan Quillez and your sister IS? Yes. Okay. Did you see that type of behavior anywhere else except for outside of that house? Yes. Where else did you see it? Um, we would be in the car sometimes at family events. So at family events where other people are around, you are saying that you also saw other inappropriate behavior? Yes. Okay. And would that be the similar things that you described earlier, which I believe you said, and just correct me if I'm wrong, that you saw him groping her, and you described groping as grabbing her around the waist, maybe the buttocks, and then on the chest? Mm -hmm. Close to it, yes. Okay. And do you recall that a deposition that you gave um, in June of this year? Some things, yes. Okay, do you remember 
you and I, I questioned you during that time period. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. In June of 20, in June of 2023, just a few months ago, do you recall telling me that? Your Honor, I would object to improper impeachment. Sustained. Ma'am, could you tell me, is the only areas that you ever recall him groping her in all around the waist, the buttocks, or in the chest? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, did you ever at any time say anything differently than that? The mouth. Now you said that you saw him kiss her on the mouth as well, correct? Yes. Was there anywhere else that you saw him kiss her? Mm -hmm. On the chest, I guess, and grope, inappropriate. On the chest, meaning on her breast area or on her neck? Neck. You said you saw, um, I think you said at one point that you recall them having sex from time to time. Yes. Okay. Was that something that you actually saw yourself or is that something that you were told by your sister? Some of them were told, um, yeah. Some of them were told, did you actually ever see I.S. and Jonathan Quillis having sex? No. Never. Now you told us about one occasion where you said that you were on a couch, correct? Correct. And they were on the same couch? Yes. And you never opened your eyes and they were having sex on that same couch? Yes. Okay. You, how are you certain that it was Jonathan Quillis that that was that person having sex with I.S.? I'm an adult. You're an adult. We, yes. I'm just, as an adult now and as a child then, who have been through it myself, I know the distinct sounds of moaning and an intercourse movement. Okay, and, and maybe I wasn't clear. How did you know that that was Jonathan Quillas? I can recognize his voice. Okay, so you heard him speaking during that time period? No, I heard him moaning. You heard moaning? Yes. And you identified that moaning as having come from him? Yes. Now, this occasion, you said, was about a year or more before I.S. went missing, correct? Yes. You never told anybody about that happening, though? No. Okay. In fact, you never mentioned this incident in the couch until June of this year. I can recall, yes. You never mentioned that to anybody in almost four and a half years, more than four and a half years since your sister I.S. went missing? That I can recall. That you can recall, you never mentioned that before. Yes. June of 2023, you decided that that's when you would reveal that information. Yes. Now, the sexual relationship that you've described and told this jury about, you say went on for years, maybe two years. Yes. You never mentioned that whatsoever to anybody before I.S. went missing, correct? No. You, in fact, didn't even mention it after I.S. went missing until more than a week later, correct? Correct. Almost two weeks after she goes missing, then you finally reveal that information. Correct. And if I'm not even mistaken, you were questioned by police immediately after your sister went missing. And you denied there being anything like that going on, correct? Correct. I know you don't, might not recall the exact date, but was it after Christmas that you began to reveal this information that you knew about I.S. and Jonathan Quillis? Maybe around that time, yes. And do you recall a time period when your mom, Kimberly Mobley, was making every effort she could possibly make to try and find out where I.S. was? Yes. Okay. Do you remember a time during that time period when she was looking and wanting I.S. to be on the news and broadcast about her being missing? Yes. Do you recall that time period that your mom was quite upset that I.S. was not being placed on the news and broadcast as being missing? Yes. Do you recall her speaking to an officer about that specifically? Yes. Do you also recall that immediately after that is when you decided to reveal that there was a sexual relationship between Jonathan Quillas and your sister? Correct. Do you recall that your mom was told that because there was no foul play going on in this case, they would not put her in the news media? No. 
Do you recall being told that because she was simply listed as a runaway, they could not put her in the news media? I do not. I want to talk about these code names. You stated, and I'm going to ask you about Jose, but do you recall telling me during a deposition that you would use the code name Eugene? Not that I can recall. Was Eugene a name that Ias would use as a code name? Yes. Was that code name used for Jonathan Quillas? Yes. Okay. That code name of Eugene, is that a code name you ever told anybody about prior to June of this year? More than four and a half years after your sister went missing? Not that I can recall. I don't know. You never told anybody that before June of this year? Not that I can recall. As to Jose, you never told anybody about Jose being Jonathan Quillas until this same time period where you decided to reveal this information more than a week, almost two weeks after your sister went missing. Correct. All right, so that week, or two, almost two weeks, you all are searching for where IS might be, correct? Yes. You're contacting her friends. Yes. You are sending leads to friends and family and trying to get people to find out where she might be. Mm, yes. But you knew the entire time that she had plans to go to your grandma's, correct? To my grandmother, yes. And that's your grandmother in Georgia, right? Yes. Okay. You knew that the day she went missing? Yes. She told you that in that conversation by the picnic table. Yes. And you told her, don't go. Yes. You never revealed that to anybody, that that's the conversation that you guys had until four months after your sister went missing. Is that correct? That's correct. In fact, you were asked about that conversation at the picnic table many times by police, by your family, and you said over and over again, it was about nothing. Is that correct? That's correct. But in fact, she told you that she was going to her grandma's. Correct. And you didn't think that that was important enough to tell anybody for nearly four months. Let me ask you something. Did your mom tell you to say that Jose was Jonathan Quillas? Absolutely not. Were you forced to say that Jose is Jonathan Quillas? Absolutely not. Did you all talk about doing that because you needed there to be foul play in this case for it to get the news media involved? Absolutely not. You want us to believe that Jose is Jonathan Quillas. There was this sexual relationship going on for years. That IS went missing. And you never said anything about that until almost two weeks after she was gone. That's what you want us to believe. Correct. Let me ask you about Kamar Humphrey. You knew IS had been caught with the young man that lives across the street, Kamar Humphrey, correct? Correct. You knew who he was, but you all had never really had any kind of interaction, significant interactions. Correct. You didn't know that IS and Kamar Humphrey had been in a sexual relationship for months, did you? Mm, I knew about them, yes. So you knew that they had been in a relationship for months? Not a relationship for months, but I knew about an encounter they had, yes. And according to you at that time, that was just that one encounter that she got caught for, correct? Correct. So you did not know that there had been a sexual relationship going on for months? I still don't know if there was a sexual relationship for months. She didn't give you any details about that relationship at all, correct? because... Mm, no.
All right, let me talk to you about some of the items that were found in a landfill. You said that your sister's size was a small. Yes. Maybe a medium. Yes. In February of 2018, it's been said that that's the time period that those underwear were purchased. Do you know that those were a gift from your aunt to uh, your sister? I'm not sure. I'm sorry, you're not sure? I'm not sure. Okay. Do you recall that at all? I don't recall. In February of 2018, when those underwear were purchased, was your sister pregnant at that time? No. That would have been about five months before she got pregnant, correct? Correct. So her size at that time would have been a small. Correct. It would be abnormal to upsize to a large in February of 2018, correct? No. Do you upsize your underwear? If I want it, yes. Have you ever purchased a large underwear for IS? No. As a gift or anything like that? No. If you were going to go buy her a gift, you'd buy her a small. I don't buy her underwear. All right, I want to talk to you about the day um, that IS went missing. You brought out, um, I, I, sorry, the state showed you a photograph of a phone number yes. attached to a, a person that you didn't really know, correct? Correct. Is that true that person's name was something like Brandon or Brian? To my knowledge. That's the name that you understood was that person on that uh, phone number? Yes. Okay, and did you try to track that person down? I believe so, yeah. Did you actually ask Alberta to track that person down for you? Um, I believe so, yeah. And was it Alberta who was making the phone calls trying to reach that person? Mm, I believe so. And was the reason why you were doing that because you believed IS had been in contact with that phone number? No, I was just following up on any leads. You were following up on any leads? Yes. That were related to IS being missing, correct? Right. Let me ask you this. You talked about some inappropriate things you witnessed. Were any of your siblings around during those time periods? Maybe sometimes. Okay. Were, uh, were some of Jonathan Quillez's children around during those time periods? Yes. Okay. So if they have never seen anything like that, you'd be the only one who could testify to that. Your objection is speculation regarding what others have seen. When you were around, would they also have been in the same position as you were to observe these inappropriate actions that you are saying? Yes, objection, speculation. Uh, overall. You can answer. Mm, not that I would know. Okay. Would they be in the same area as you to be able to observe that? Yes, but their sight wouldn't be on the same thing I could be looking at, so I wouldn't know. So in this scenario that you're talking about, they could be in the same room as you, but they're not paying attention? Correct. Okay, so you might see it, but three other people could be in the room and they wouldn't see it also children. How old, you said his, his son Jacob was your age or IS's age, correct? He would be there as well, correct? Sometimes. Okay, so if he didn't observe anything, if he's in the same position as you, you just noticed it and they didn't. Again, objection argument. Overall. You can answer. I wouldn't know. Just a moment. about the um, pills, please. Those pills were, well, let me start back. You and your sister, I.S., shared a bedroom, correct? Correct. And in that bedroom, you guys had a, you had two beds in the room that you each, that you each had your own bed, correct? Correct. But then you all shared a closet, yes. correct? Correct. All right, in that closet, there was an Adidas box in the top right-hand corner of your closet that we saw a photograph of, and some Don Quay pills and parsley pills were found inside, correct? Correct. Okay. Were you the one to locate those pills? No. It was your mom who found them? Yes. Okay. 
As far as those pills, that was in April of 2019, correct? Um, can, you, can you recall? This was, it wasn't immediately after IS went missing. I can't recall what, around when. That information didn't come from you, though, at all? Mm, not that I know of. It was your mom who was searching through the room and found them? Yes. And that was months after, as best you can recall, months after IS went missing? Um, I don't know about months, but I don't, I'm not sure of the time. And again, you never mentioned those pills being used or being given to anybody, correct? Prior to them being found by your mom? I'm, I don't recall. As far as how those pills arrived at your home, you don't know how they got to your house? Don't know. I don't know. You do not know? No. So you don't know who gave those pills to, if it was your sister or wherever? I know where they come from, yes. I don't know how they got in my house. When you say you know where they came from, that's just based off of what your sister might have said to you, correct? And personal experience, yes. And again, that's not something that you provided information to police about or anything like that. That was found by your mom. That I can recall. Nothing further. Did your brothers go often to the defendant's home? No. Did, the, did your brothers often go to their, their father's home? Not really. Well, one, but not really the other one. And would the other one then stay with your mom? Yes. So is it fair to say that it was you and your sister mainly that would go to the defendant's home? Yes. Now, as you started to get older, did you go less, though, to the defendant's home? Yes. However, did IS continue to frequent the defendant's home? Yes. And I had to... And um, also to the defendant's older son that we talked about, I believe you said his name was Jaco. Yes. He didn't start living with the defendant until later on in 2018. Is that fair to say? Yes, ma'am. So he was not living there half of 2018 and then 2017, was he? No. And did IS actually have a relationship with Kamar Humphrey? No. Was this a sh very short period of time? Yes. That you're aware of? Yes, ma'am. And did your sister have sex with Kamar Humphrey to get back at the defendant? Correct. And when your sister was gone, you didn't believe at that time she was actually murdered, did you? Correct. And ultimately, you just want to protect her? Yes. No further questions. Can you just again state your name for the record again? Samaya Sawyer. And we'll refer to you as SS the remaining of your testimony. And ma'am, what is your date of birth again? September 25th, 2003. And how old are you today? I'm 19. Back in 2017, how old would you have been be before your birthday? 14. How old would you have been post-birthday? I'm sorry. The previous question is 13, and this question is 14. Yes, ma'am. And then in 2018, how old, what two ages would you have been, depending on the month, based on your birthday in September? 14 and 15. Now, during those time frames, I believe you had stated that you had spent a lot of time at the defendant's house. And again, just for record purposes, the person that you know to be Jonathan Quillez, is he still located here in the courtroom today, like as of last, like last week? Yes, ma'am. And just identify something that he is wearing today? Um, a white shirt. And um, is he where, in, in what part of the courtroom? Um, to my right. Your Honor, let the, let the record reflect the witness has identified the defendant again. So reflected. And would you spend a lot of time at the defendant's house with your aunt and also your aunt Naomi's house? 
Yes. And would you spend time at the defendant's house along with your sister? Yes. And then would there be times where only you out of the siblings went to the defendant's home? Yes. Now, during the time frame when you were between the ages of 13 and 15, were they living at that 1503 16th Street house? Yes. And just so that we know that we're talking about the same house, I'm just going to show you one picture very briefly. It states composite 19. Are we talking about this residence here in States 19G? Yes. Okay. And how often do you think you would visit at the defendant's house and your Aunt Naomi's house during the ages of 13 and 15? Mm, pretty very often, yeah. And just to kind of maybe um, hone it down just a little bit, would that be weekly or maybe every two, two weeks type situation? Mm, about every two weeks, yeah. And was your mom a single mother during that time? Yes. And would you go over to the defendant's house and your Aunt Naomi's house um, because the defendant would be there and be and, make, and be an adult over you? Yes. Okay. And is that fair to say because your aunt would be at work most of the time? Yes. Okay. Now... During this time frame, SS, did something happen between you and the defendant that was also inappropriate? Yes. Were you first the age of 13 when something happened? Yes. Now, we also talked about um, the residence. Was there another two locations that we're about to talk about where inappropriate things that your uncle did to you? Yes. Where were those two locations, just generally speaking? Uh, the car and the beach. The beach. And we're talking about the car. What type of car? It was a red van. I'm going to be showing you again just one picture from States Composite 21. I'm showing you states evidence 21C. Is that the red van that you were just talking about? Yes. And then the beach, would that be down in like Jacksonville Beach area? Yes. And have you recently viewed a picture of yourself at the beach back in March of 2018? Yes. And was that picture on the defendant's cell phone? Yes. And was it a picture of you? There's two pictures, wasn't there? Yes, ma'am. And was there a picture of you and NQ in one of, the, one of them? Yes. And then was there a picture of you, IS, and NQ in another picture? Yes. Now, can you tell us about, the, before we get to the incidents, will the defendant ever compliment you? Yes. And what type of compliments would he give you? Um, like compliment my, my body or tell me I was beautiful. Can you talk, and I know, this is a, I know this is tough, but yeah, can you get a little closer? We just want to make sure everyone can hear what you say, okay? Yeah, um, he would compliment my body or tell me I'm beautiful. Now when you say compliment your body, what exactly do you mean by that? Like um, my shape or, yeah. Would that include um, the breast area? Yes. Would that include the buttocks area? Yes. Did you have any other uncles compliment you in that way? No.
How did the compliments make you feel? Um, like a little uncomfortable, yeah. Now, did the defendant like to talk to you when you were not at the residence of his and, and his ex-wife's um, Naomi Mobley? Yes. How did the defendant like to talk to you? Um, through Snapchat. And did the defendant tell you why he liked to speak with you by, app, by Snapchat? Yes. And why is that? Because the message is a race. And would the defendant do these compliments as well in the Snapchat format? Yes. Now, did the compliments turn into a more sexual nature? Yes. Can you tell us about that? Um, he would say things that he would want to do to me or send pictures of himself. What kind of pictures would he send of himself? Um, nude. Now, drawing your attention to when you were 13, would this, this would have been in 2017, is, is that accurate? Yes, ma'am. And this would have been before your birthday in September of 2017? Yes, ma'am. Do you remember what time of the year in 2017? Mm. I late, late 2017. So if it's late 2017, would you have been 14? Um, yeah, but some were before I was 14, yeah. Okay. So in, first I want to talk about when you're 13, when something first happened. Do you recall? Yes. Where were you? At the beach. Who was at the beach on this occasion? Um, me, my sister, and the defendant's daughter. Okay. Was it common for the four of you to go to the beach together? Yes. Where were you specifically at on the beach? And what I mean, had you gone to a restroom? Were you on the sand, the water? Um, Tell us exact, kind of more detailed wise um, the water and where was NQ and IS on the sand can you tell us what happened when you and the defendant are in the water at the beach when you're 13 years old yes um, he was touching me like with his hands over my body now did you have a bathing suit on yes I know just making sure um, typically, what kind of bathing suit would you wear? A uh, two-piece. And you said that his hands, and where did they touch? Um, my body. Now, when you say your body, um, that can mean a lot of different things. Um, can you just take us maybe from head to toe where he touched you on your body? Um, my breasts, my butt, and my front area. Okay. And I'm... I apologize for, and we can refer to it as, as front area, the rest of the testimony potentially. I might have to clarify sometimes, but just for record purposes, when you say front area, are you referring to your, to your vagina area? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, did he, when he used his hands, defendant, to, to touch you in, in, I think you said your breast, your buttocks, and then the front area, which we know that what that means here, would he touch you over your bathing suit or under your bathing suit on this on this on this time? Both. Okay. Now, did you want him to do that? No. Okay. Did it feel awful? Yes. Did it, how long did it last? Mm, around two minutes. Did it seem like an eternity? Yeah. Now after that, did you, did you tell anyone? No. And why not? It's embarrassing, I guess. Yeah. Was it hard to understand it? Yeah. 
was the defendant somebody that you had gotten to know well? Yes. And the defendant was, a lot of the time, you were in his care, weren't you? Yes. Was it confusing? Yes. Now, did anything else that your memory tells you happen when you were 13? Mm. Um. Mm. I'm not really good with dates. Not well, let me ask you this. You talked about the touching. Did that happen when you were 13? Yes. And it happened at the beach? Yes. Now, when you were 13, did the defendant ever touch you with some other part of his body? Yes. Which part? Um, or parts? Um, his genital area. What about his mouth? Yes. Okay, let's talk about mouth first. Where did the defendant, and the, now did the defendant use his mouth at any time during this time at the beach? Not that I can recall. Okay. And at this time at the beach when you were 13, did the defendant use, and we'll get into spe more specifics in a, if, if it applies or not, with his genitals at the beach, and this time? Um, I believe he was um, kissing my neck, yes ma'am. Okay. Is it hard to relive this? Yeah. So the defendant kissed your neck when you were at the beach, when the first time you were 13? Yes ma'am. Now, when you were 13, did the defendant kiss you on the lips? Yes. Would that have been at the beach or somewhere else? At the beach. Okay. Now, did anything else happen at the beach on this occasion besides the touching? And I say besides, I'm not trying to obviously minimize, um, but we've, that we've already discussed regards the, ki the kissing and the touching. Um, he rubbed himself against me. Okay. Now, when you say rubbed himself, does that mean that his body touched your body in a, where it was rubbing up against each other? Yes, ma'am. Could you feel his genitals rubbing against your genitals? Yes, ma'am. Did you have your bathing suit on at this time? Yes, ma'am. Did the defendant have a bathing suit on? It was like shorts. Okay. And would, did he have a shirt on or off? Off. After this happened, SS, did something happen after uh, another time? Yes. And where were you located? Um, at his house. I'm sorry? At his house. And is that the, the house that we just looked at in States 19, the, what, the yellow house? Yes, ma'am. And do you recall approximately how old you were at this time? Mm, around 13, 14. And you recall who was at the house during this time? Yes. Who? Um, my aunt Naomi, me. I'm not sure if his daughter was there at the time, and him. And with any other your siblings present? No. So just to be so, it was in total four of you, or three, of you? maybe four, but you know for sure three of you. Yes. Where, where did something happen at in the house or outside the house? In the living room. And do you recall what time of day or night this was? Um, it was late at night. Where, where were you located at late at night? On the couch. Where was your aunt Naomi located? In her room. Were you asleep? Yes. Did something happen that awoke you? Yes. What happened where you woke up? Um, the defendant was touching me. And did the defendant come onto the couch with you? Yes. And did the defendant say anything to you? Not that I remember.
And what did the defendant do to you while you were on the couch? Um, he was touching me. I, I know it's hard, I know, but we've got to have you speak up because we're all, we just all need to make sure we know what you're saying, okay? I know it's hard. Um, he was touching me. When you say touching me, you know, I, I know I have to ask the difficult questions. I apologize again. Do you need some water or anything? You okay? Okay. All right. When you say touching me, what is the defendant touching you with? Um, his genitals. Do you have clothes on at this time? Not the bottom portion. Did you have your bottom portion on prior to the defendant waking you up? Yes. Did you have like a one-piece pajama set or two-piece pajama set? It was two. So are you saying that the defendant pulled down your, were you wearing pants or shorts? Um, it was shorts. Did the defendant pull your shorts down? Yes. Now. You're on the couch sleeping. Did you have a blanket or any or pillow or anything with you on the couch? Um, it was a blanket and the couch pillows. Okay, so you were sleeping with the couch pillows and then you did have a blanket for the evening? Yes. Now, were you on top of the blanket or underneath the blanket? It was just like on me. I was underneath it. You were underneath the blanket? Is that a yes for the record? Yes. Now, did the defendant come underneath the blanket with you? No. The defendant was on top of the blanket? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What did the defendant do with the blanket, if, if he did anything at all? Just like, moved it to the side. Did you want the defendant to pull your shorts down? No. Did you say anything? No. Were you in shock? Yes. Did... Your panties get pulled down. Yes. You tell us what happened from there. Um, he... That's... It's intercourse. Do you need a second? I'm okay. Okay. Um, it was intercourse. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I know. It was, um, intercourse and he was just touching me all over. I have to ask you a hard question to make sure I have it right on the record. And you can just say yes or no, okay? When you say intercourse, does that mean that the defendant inserted his penis inside of your vagina? Yes. And you did not want this to happen, did you? No. And you said that you were either 13 or 14 at the time? Yes, ma'am. And then you said the defendant was touching you all over. Is that with his hands? Yes. Did your shirt ever come off during this time? No. Did your aunt Naomi ever come out the bedroom during this time? No. Did the defendant use his mouth for anything during this time? Not that I can remember. After this happened to you, after this incident, did you tell anyone? No. And why not? I didn't know how, or I just didn't. Did you just say you didn't know how? Yeah. Were you scared? Yeah. Now, did the defendant sexual abuse you again after this? Yes. Where were you located? In the car. And that's the red minivan in States 21 that you had identified for us? Yes, ma'am. Now, were you and the defendant going anywhere? Yes. Where were you guys? Where were the two? Was it just the two of you or was there more people in the car? Just the two. And where were the two of you going? To the store. And do you recall what store it was? Winn Dixie, I believe. Okay. And do you recall if it was in the daytime, the nighttime? It was the daytime. 
Do you recall approximately how old you were? Um, 14, 15-ish. Did something happen beyond just going to Winn-Dixie? Yes. Did the defendant take you to Winn-Dixie with the car? No. Where did the defendant take you? Um, like an isolated area. And was it here, though, in stolen Jacksonville? Yes. And what happened in the van? Um, I got in the back seat and he bent me over. Did you want to go in the back seat? No. And, you know, obviously we've looked at the pictures. Are we talking about the two center seats or are we talking about the third row? Third row. Did the defendant ask you to go to the back seat or tell you to go to the back seat? How did that happen? More like tell me to go to the back seat. And what happened in the back seat? Um, he bent me over and we had penetrational intercourse. And when you say bent you over, um, did he take off any of your clothing? My pants. Okay. And would that include your panties? Yeah. And again, I apologize for saying these harsh terms with you. I know you're still only 19. The defendant also at this time in the, in the red van that we talked about in stage 21 and insert his penis into your vagina. Yes. Now the defendant do anything with his hands during this horrible time? Not that I can recall. What about, did the defendant do anything with his mouth to you? I believe he was um, kissing my neck. He, the defendant was kissing your neck? Yes. Did the defendant say anything to you? No. Now, after this, did you go back to the defendant's house? Yes. Did you tell anyone? No. And was it based upon the same reasons that you've already told us about being scared, confused, not knowing what to do? Yes. Now, is there another time that the defendant sexually abused you that you remember? Yes. And is that in regards, again, at the defendant's residence? Yes. And were you staying the night? Yes. Do you recall who was there that night? Yes. Who was, who was home? Um, him, his daughter, and me. So just the three of you? Yes. Was your Aunt Naomi working through the night? Yes. Do you recall approximately how old you were? 14, 15. And is it fair to say that um, in totality, any sexual abuse that the defendant did to you was between 2017 and 2018? I'm going to object. Is counsel testifying or asking a question? Sustained. Would we, would we have been in, when you're 14 or 15, would we have been in 2017 or 2018? Both. Okay. Now, the incident that you're here discussing now in regards to being at the defense residence, do you recall approximately when that was? Late 2017. Oh, no, 2018. Okay. And would, that, would this have occurred prior to your sister's disappearance and murder? Yes. Now, can you tell us what happened during this incident? Yes. Um, I was in the bedroom in the bed. Um, his daughter was next to me asleep. Um, and it was penetrational and of course again. You were, were you sleeping in the defendant's bed? Yes. And I believe you stated there was two other individuals in the bed as well? Yes. 
And was that the defendant? Yes. And you said it was his daughter in Q? Yes. Do you recall how old she approximately was at the time? Mm, like three or four. Was she awake or asleep? Sleep. Were you asleep at the time? Yes. Did the defendant wake you up? Yes. Did the defendant do anything to your clothing? Um, the bottoms were off. When you say the bottoms, what does that include? Um, underwear and shorts. And did the defendant do anything with his genitalia? Yes. And what did he do? Um, it was penetrational intercourse. Okay. And did the defendant insert his penis inside of your vagina? Yes. The defendant, did he use his hands at all during this um, sexual abuse? Besides groping me, I don't think so. When you, and again, just to be clear, when you say groping, does that mean the defendant's hands would touch um, your chest area, your, your private area, and your buttocks area? Yes. Did the defendant do anything with his mouth during this time? Not that I can recall. Now, after this sexual abuse occurred, did you tell anyone? No. Was it based on the same reasons that you've already stated? Yes. Now, the last time you testified, we had talked about Don Quay. Well, before I get to that, are there any other incidents of sexual abuse that you remember? Not that I can recall right now. Okay. Sir, when you testified last week, you had talked about Don, Don Quay and Parsley. Did the defendant ever ask you to take Don Quay and Parsley? Yes. And did you ever receive Don Quay and Parsley pills? Yes. And who did you receive these pills from? The defendant. And did you take the pills? Yes. Did you have any effects physically from taking Don Quay and Parsley, and did you take them together? Um, together. It makes you drowsy. Okay. And did you notice any other physical conditions? Mm. Mm, not that I can recall. Now, we had looked at your, um, previously about pictures from your bedroom. Do you recall that? Yes. And that states 18 for the record. And were those Don Quay and Percy pills, again, were they found in you and IS's bedroom? Yes. And where did those bottles come from? The defendant. Now, were you in love with the defendant like your sister, I.S., thought she was? Your Honor, argumentative and speculative. I was asking her. Oh. I understand the question. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Overruled. No. And did your sister find out what had happened to you? Yes. Did it hurt your sister? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Basis and speculation. Ruled. And you already answered, so we'll just move on. And la my last, one of my last questions for you, ma'am. After finding out what the defendant had done to you. Is that why I.S. had sex with Kamara Humphrey? Yes. Was it revenge? Yes. Objection, Your Honor. Speculation. Overruled.
No further questions, Your Honor. Counsel, from now on, whoever asks questions, who makes objections? I thought that was pretty clear. Just from now on. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. May I please escort? All right, good afternoon. afternoon. And I know we tend to trail off, so I'm going to try to remind you, just like uh, Ms. French did, to stay up close to the mic just so that we can make sure we hear everything moving forward, okay? Okay. All right. I want to just kind of go back and start a little bit before where we left off. You've kind of detailed and gone through, I believe, four, four incidences, essentially. There was a beach incident an incident on the couch, there was one in the van at, uh, when you were headed to Winn-Dixie, and then there was a last one on Mr. Quillas and your Aunt Naomi's bed with their daughter also on the bed. Is that accurate? Yes. Those are the four incidents that you can recall as you sit here today? Yes. Okay. There were no other incidents that you can remember outside of those four? No. And you said that you weren't the best with dates, so the date and time period that you provided is basically in 2017 into 2018, but nothing more specific than that. Yes. All right, when your sister was missing, she'd been gone for nearly two weeks at that point. You'd been confronted about your Uncle John's relationship with her at that point. You'd also been lumped in with your sister, and accusations, including you, were put out, correct? Correct. You were asked, had Mr. Quillas ever forced himself upon you or forced you to have sex? Your answer was, he never did anything to me. Isn't that correct? Yes. You said to your mother, you said to several police officers that nothing ever happened between you and Mr. Quillis. Correct? Correct. You then changed that at some point in that conversation or in later conversations to, well, he just touched me on my buttocks or in my chest. Correct? Correct. You were confronted again and again asked about these scenarios to figure out what was really going on, correct? Correct. After being confronted several times, not even on the same dates, not even by the same officers, you finally said it happened once, and you described a couch incident. Do you recall that? Yes. Now that couch incident, it's fair to say you've described that incident in several different ways, on several different dates, in several different occasions, correct? I wouldn't agree with that. You at one point said that that incident happened in the evening time when your Aunt Naomi was sleeping in the other room, did you not? Probably. You then changed that and said, oh no, she was awake. Do you recall telling me that? Yes. In fact, you told me that she was awake, and the way you knew she was awake was because she had a conversation or spoke to Mr. Quillas. Correct? Correct. The dates on which you said that incident happened varied widely. At one point, you said it happened in December of 2017. Another time, you said it happened earlier in the year. 
Correct? I don't recall. Now I want to ask you a quick question. As far as these incidents that you've described, is it safe to say, or is it fair to say, that all of them occurred while Mr. Quillas and your Aunt Naomi were living at that 16th Street house? No matter where they occurred, but that's where they were living during this time period. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I'm not good with dates. All right, do you recall telling police that all of these incidents happened while Mr. Quillas and your Aunt Naomi were living on the 16th, in the 16th Street house? I don't recall. Okay. Are you alleging then today that there were sexual encounters or interactions with Mr. Quillas that happened after he moved to the Trout River Drive home? No. You're not alleging that he had any sexual encounters with you after they moved to the Trout River Drive? Not that I can recall. All right, thank you. You would agree that they moved to that Trout River Drive house in April of 2018. Does that sound about right? I don't recall. And just for dates, and I know you said you're not great at dates, so I'm just going to try to put this to rest. If they, in fact, moved there in April of 2018, you would say, or you would agree, that any alleged sexual encounters ended in April of 2018, if that, in fact, is the date that they moved to the Trout River address? No. You believe it continued after that date? Mm. In, like intercourse? Yes. Or any sexual encounters. You've described four. I guess. No. No. Well, just make it clear for me, because either it ended in April 2018 when they moved to the Trout River address, if all of the incidents happened at the 16th Street address, or it continued to happen and it did happen at the Trout River address. So which one is it? No. It did not continue at the Trout River address. It would have had to, yes. Um, okay. You are changing that even right here as you sit. You're confusing me. I'll try to make it clear. I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just trying to get an idea of when it stopped. You've previously told police that it only happened while they were living at the 16th Street address. If they moved to the Trout River address in April of 2018, you may not remember that. Someone else will. If they moved to the, their, that house in April of 2018, your statements that it only happened at the 16th Street address would mean that it did not continue after April of 2018, correct? No. Okay. After you told police that the sexual encounters with Mr. Quillas only happened one time on the couch, you never ever detailed any sort of beach incident where you were touched inappropriately or anything like that at that time, correct? Not that I recall. In fact, it was four months where you led police to believe that this couch incident was the only sexual encounter you alleged to have happened. Do you recall that time period? No. You, you went four months without changing that version of what happened until you talked to Detective Milowicki. Do you recall talking to Detective Milowicki? Yes. And that was around April of 2019, nearly four months after your sister went missing. Correct? Yes. 
You gave state, a statement to Detective Milwicky. Do you remember doing that? Yes. Do you remember when you gave that statement to her, you told her essentially, hey, I want to tell you everything that happened. I want to give you all the details I didn't give you before. Do you remember that conversation with Detective Milwicky? Yes. Do you remember telling her what I just said, that you were going to come clean and basically tell her everything you didn't tell her before? Not those exact words, but yes. That sentiment. I may not be quoting you, and I, I wasn't there, so I don't know exactly what you said, but am I at least characterizing it in the same way that you talked to Mr. I'm sorry, to Detective Milowicki? Yes. Okay. In that statement, you gave um, some background and some details to several incidents that occurred. Do you recall talking to Detective Milowicki about being punched in the face? I don't recall the face, but being hit, yes. You don't recall talking to Detective Milowicki about being punched in the face? Not uh, being hit, yes. One moment, please. Do you recall telling your mother that you got hit in the face? It's five years ago. So you're not saying it's not possible that you said that, you just don't recall it as you sit here today? Yes. Okay. Do you recall telling Detective Milowicki that it was Mr. Quillis who punched you in the face because you told him, and I quote, he had a small dick? Maybe. You maybe remember telling that to Detective Milowicki? I don't recall. In your statement, when you talked to Detective Milowicki, you later told her that that wasn't true. Do you remember telling her that? I don't recall. Do you remember telling her that you were punched because he wanted you to take some green pills? Yes. Do you remember telling her that he punched you and made you take 10 green pills, exactly 10 green pills? I don't remember the amount I told her, but yes. Later on, when I asked you these questions, do you recall telling me that it was only two pills? I don't recall. Do you recall if you in fact said that it was two pills, not ten? I don't recall. Sound like something you would say? I don't know. You were asked numerous times by police whether Mr. Quillas had ever communicated with you in any sexual manner whatsoever over social media, over any type of social media accounts, including Snapchat. Do you recall them asking you about this? Yes. Every time police asked you, literally every time, you told police that nothing inappropriate ever was discussed on any social media platform. Do you recall telling police that? Yes. In fact, in that statement that you gave to Detective Milowicki four months after where you said you were coming clean and telling her everything, she asked you again, did he ever communicate with you via Snapchat? Did he ever talk about anything on Snapchat? And you told her no. It was just normal uncle-niece conversations on Snapchat. Correct? Correct. It wasn't until June of 2023, four and a half years later, when I asked you about that, that all of a sudden now you guys have had all of these sexual, sexually suggestive conversations on Snapchat, correct? Correct. And that's something you never told police, not even to this day as you sit here right now. Correct? I guess. You were actually asked by your Aunt Naomi when allegations and accusations started coming up about your Uncle John having any sort of sexual relationship with your sister. You were asked by your aunt if he had done anything to you. I was never asked by her. You claim, as you sit here, that she never asked you if anything inappropriate happened between the two of you. Let me finish the question before you answer. Your Honor, I just ask that counsel not be argumentative with the witness. Why don't you just rephrase the question? 
Judge, I was just trying to stop to make sure that the record was clear, but. I understand. I'm not faulting anybody. I'm just saying it's a brief question. Of course. You're claiming that your Aunt Naomi never asked you whether there was any sort of sexual encounters, interaction, or anything between you and Mr. Quillis. I don't recall her asking. Okay. You don't recall her asking that question at all? No. Is your statement that she did not ask you that? Not that aunt. Not that what? Aunt. Other aunts asked you, though? Yes. And you told them nothing ever happened? Correct. All right, let me talk about the first encounter that you described. You stated you're at the beach, that you believe it was yourself, your sister, I.S., and uh, Mr. Quillez and his daughter, N.Q., correct? Correct. But in fact, your brothers were there as well, K.M. and S.G., correct? No. You don't recall telling police that your brothers were also present at that beach? No, I don't recall them being there. All of these people are on the beach, and you're claiming that just you were in the water when this sexual encounter occurred. In that area, yes. So they were all sitting on the beach, didn't notice anything going on in the water whatsoever? No. You never told any police officer about this beach incident? I don't recall. It wasn't until you were in your deposition in February of 2022 three years, more than three years later that you disclosed this beach incident, correct? I'm not good with dates. It wasn't any time close to when this incident occurred. And it definitely wasn't in that four months after conversation that you had with Detective Milowicki where you claim, came clean about everything that happened between you and Mr. Quillis, correct? Correct. As far as the incident that you described that happened in the van, today you testified that you were headed to Winn-Dixie and that he took you to some undisclosed or isolated area. You don't recall where that was or anything along those lines? No. You recall telling police that at one point it was in the abandoned parking lot near the Winn-Dixie? I don't recall. Do you recall telling police that at some point his daughter was in the car with you during some incident. I don't recall. Does Mr. Quillez have any, since you have testified that you all have had these sexual encounters, does Mr. Quillez have any distinct markings on his genitalia? Not that I recall. You've stated this throughout your testimony on direct, but I'm going to ask it to you again. At no point in time throughout this time period that you allege that these incidents occurred, did you ever mention anything to anyone, correct? No. Even in this incident that you allege where your Aunt Naomi was awakened and within talking distance, you never said anything to her? No. You never yelled out, you never did anything along those lines? No. Even after your sister went missing, there were allegations of sexual abuse of your sister. You still, even then when you were asked, did not tell the truth about what you now claim happened. Correct? Correct. That's a serious situation going on if your sister's not being found, correct? You think? And you still didn't think that, hey, maybe I should disclose this information so that they know, hey, Mr. Quillis, he's been sexually abusing me and my sister. But you didn't think to do that, did you? No. You would agree that there has been little to no consistency and what you allege to have happened between you and Mr. Quillis? 
No. You started off saying he never did anything to you, correct? Correct. You changed, though, to what happened, when it happened, how many times it happened, who was there when these things happened. So many details of these incidents that you laid out vary depending on the day that you're asked. Got to be a lot to keep a track of, correct? Correct. Nothing further. SS, do you go about your life wanting to think about the defendant sexually abusing you? No. Is it in fact something that you don't even want to think about? Correct. Do you want to forget about it? Yes. And did you ever tell anyone what the defendant did to you? No. Did you ever go to your mom and tell her? No. Were you in fact the one that got in confronted about it? Yes. And was that because your mom had found something? Yes. And based upon that, did your mom then confront you? Yes. Had your mom not found something and had not confronted you, would you have told? No. Were you afraid to tell anything? Yes. So you did not freely tell this information, did you? No, I didn't. Were you also protecting your sister? Yes. And why? I thought she was going with my grandma. And uncle. can you? I know it's hard. Take a take a moment and breathe. I just want to make sure we all hear you, okay? Um, I thought she was going with my grandma, and I wanted to keep our friendship. Did you think if you told about the sexual abuse that your sister would be mad at you? Yeah. And did you want to keep her secret from the world? Yeah. If you could. Yeah. But you couldn't, could you? No. Your mom found out. Yeah. Did your mom ask you any details about the sexual abuse when this first came out, when your mom found out? Yes. Did you want to tell her much? No. And did your mom respect that? Yes. And this was your mom finding out about the defendant sexually abusing you. That happened while your sister is missing. Is that fair to say? Yes. Why in April were you ready to tell more about the sexual abuse? She wasn't coming back. Do you need a moment? Okay. I'm almost done, I promise. Is that when you knew you could break the promise to your sister? Yeah. And is that why you're willing to tell all about the defendant sexually abusing you? Yeah. Nothing further. Uh, Ma'am, thank you for your testimony. Thank you.